Okay, here we go. I'm Carolyn, this is my RV life, and today is the final section of the video series on choosing what kind of vehicle to live in. Finally, part three. I'm gonna be covering class B, class B plus, which includes things like sprinter vans. I'm also gonna be talking about regular passenger vans. I'm gonna be talking about schoolies. I'm gonna be talking about cargo trailers, and I'm even gonna be talking about horse trailers. I've met people who live in horse trailers. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of living, traveling, working in those three vehicles today. If you haven't seen the first two videos in this series, be sure to click up here. Video one, I talked about the pros and cons of class A's and class C's. I also talked about the five critical things you have to consider before you ever even start shopping for a vehicle to live in. That's video one. Video two, I talked about fifth wheels, tractor trailers, and truck campers, so you don't wanna miss that. Again, click up here for those videos and get that pen and paper out because today we're gonna talk all about vans. So let's talk about class B's and cla class B pluses. In case you missed the first definition of a class B plus, it's basically a class B, fully self-contained van, but a little bit bigger. Both have a lot of really great benefits, in my opinion, for full-time RV living, or even if you just wanna travel more. One of the ben biggest benefits of them up front is that they're easier to maintain. They're basically a van, and so you don't have the problems of, of maintenance and repairs that you're gonna have in a bigger class or class C. You can take them pretty much to any auto repair shop and they're going to be able to work on it. They're, they cost less to maintain. They're, they're built on van chassis. They don't have the weight and all of the other extra things that a giant class A or class C is going to have. Again, if budget is going to be a consideration for you in your RV living nomadic lifestyle, a class B might be a better option for you. They're better made. They're sturdy. They're durable. They're really made a lot better. For one thing, you don't have like the giant box built on a chassis, which is, you know, you think about it. It's something that was kind of pieced together. A van or a class B is kind of all one unit and everything is just kind of built into it. So it's gonna be a lot sturdier, a lot more durable, a lot better built than a class A or a class C. The second benefit is it's gonna be a lot better gas mileage than you're gonna get in a class A or a class C. It's a lot smaller. It's basically just a little bit of a bigger van. Your gas mileage is gonna be better. Again, if budget is gonna be a consideration uh, for the long-term lifestyle, a van is gonna be a better option if you wanna do a lot of traveling. And that goes back to lifestyle. If you're not gonna be doing a lot of traveling and uh, gas mileage and budget aren't really considerations, but comfort is, th then you would be more than happy be living in a class A or a class C or a bigger trailer. Another benefit is that they're really easy to drive. You don't have the giant box on wheels that you have in a class A or a class C. You basically have a van, even the B pluses, it's just a modified bigger van. They're gonna be easier to drive, easier to park. You're not gonna have the vertical and the horizontal clearance issues most of the time that you're gonna have in a class A or a class A, class C or a trailer. So if you're a shy driver, if driving something this big feels intimidating to you, then a class B or a class B plus might be a really good option for you. The other benefit of a class B is that if you really want to live a more minimalist lifestyle, I do consider living in my 24 foot class C minimalist compared to most people. I have about 120 by the time you cut out the nose and the engine and everything, I have about 120, maybe 130 feet of living space. That's a that's pretty minimalist compared to most people. But boy, the ultimate in minimalism is really going to be a Class B or better yet, a van, uh, a real passenger van if you want to live in that. So if you really do want to live a minimalist lifestyle, if you just don't want to deal with all of the maintenance and the issues and all of the things that you're going to deal with in a Class C or a Class A, then a Class B van is a good in-between between that and a van. You're still going to have all the internal house systems that you have in a Class A or a Class C. You're still going to have the, the, the stove. You're going to have a refrigerator. It's, all this is going to be a lot smaller. You're going to have a microwave. You're going to have a toilet and you're going to have a shower. Everything is just going to be a lot more compact. And because most vans are 
higher quality than the class A's or class C's, there should be less maintenance costs in a B plus or a B van. Now let's talk about the cons of a B plus or a B. They are expensive to purchase. If you remember my video, and I'll put a link up here about shopping for a road trek, I was looking at, I don't know, a 98 maybe road trek, I don't remember now, with um, over 100,000 miles, and it was $22,000. They hold their value, and they hold their value for a reason, because they're very well built and they last. But you're gonna spend a lot more on a used Class B or a Class B Plus than you're gonna spend on a Class A or a Class C. But in the long run, you're gonna spend less for maintenance. So it really depends on what your needs are and what your budget is. Your upfront cost is gonna be a little bit more, but over, over time, you're actually probably gonna be spending less on maintenance and repair. However, it's for me, spending $22,000 on something with 150,000 miles on it, you, you know, you, you just kind of cringe a little bit about that. It, it's just kind of hard to get over that mental block of it being too much, but they hold their value. They're quality vehicles, they're built well, and they last, and that's why they cost more. The second con is that you're going to have less storage. Uh, I didn't talk about that aspect of moving in full-time into an RV. What is your plan for that? Are you going to sell everything you own? That's what I did. I sold everything I own, had a garage sale, sold a few things on Craigslist, and just took everything else to Goodwill, and I didn't want to leave anything in storage. Everything I own is in my RV, and if that's what you're going to do, then spend Space and storage might be important to you. A lot of people choose to keep storage, uh, pay for storage spaces, leave things with relatives or friends or whatever. So living a minimalist lifestyle on the road is really more possible. They can live in a van because you're not going to have a lot of storage in a van. You're not going to be able to carry around photo albums and all those other trinkets and mementos of your life. You're either going to need to get storage or you're going to need to get rid of them. So that's another consideration. How much of your life stuff do you want to hold on to and do you want to put stuff in storage? And that's really going to dictate how much storage you need in your in your home on wheels. Another con for me when I was looking at vans was that they had low ground clearance and that was an issue for me. Uh, I, I do drive on rough roads and some of them are pitted and some of them have a lot of rocks and ruts and stuff in them. So low clearance, especially the road trek I was looking at, I mean it really looked like it had that much road clearance and that wasn't going to work for me. I actually, especially in the shorter 24 foot class C RV, actually have pretty good ground clearance. I don't have the as long of an overhang as I had in the 29 foot. I am able to navigate through dips and rutted roads a little bit easier than I could in my 29 foot, but I definitely would not be able to do some of the roads that I've done in this in a class B or a lot of the class B vans. Of course, you can always get it raised and you can pay to have the suspension and raise this up, but then you, um, then you mess with the center of gravity and then you start having problems with it tipping over and being top heavy. So uh, I looked into that, I really did. I thought, well, I can get a van and I can get it raised. But then in the research I did, they talked about messing with the center of gravity. And then on, you know, if you're on a rutted road and you're dealing with the center and you're messing with the center of gravity, it, it'll topple over a lot easy, easier. And you don't want that. Ground clearance is going to be an issue if you want to boondock, if you want to drive on off-road like I do. But if you're going from RV park to RV park or campground to campground, that may not be, that may not matter to you. So I hope you're writing all this down <laughs> because there's a lot to consider. And again, it all goes back to how you want to live your nomadic life, right? Another con for me, and this was really the biggest one for me, is that they are so small inside. And because most, even Class Bs and even the Class B+, plus, because they're smaller, they optimize every inch of space within the van. And that usually means covering up or, or putting storage and cabinets where there might be windows. For me, they really feel like living in a cave. I have this romantic vision that I've seen pictures of living in a van, your bed is in the back and the back doors are swung wide open and you're in bed drinking your coffee with this view out the back door. Well, the reality is, you're going to have stuff stored there because there's not a lot of storage. That picture is probably not going to happen. But the beautiful thing about being human is that we're all so different and that's what makes life interesting. But for me, that feels like a cave. Maybe I'm a little claustrophobic. Uh, for me, I, I and because I do spend 8, 10, 12 hours a day inside working, I did not like how enclosed that felt. For a lot of people, it feels cozy and comfortable. 
I know a lot of people who live in vans. It's very cozy and comfortable. I even met a woman recently who lived in a, uh, a passenger converted van and she was extremely minimalist. I actually wanted to pull out her drawers and see, you know, what the heck do you, she had nothing in there. I'm like, how do you live in this? There was, she had so little stuff in there. It was amazing. I was astonished and very much envious. And she was able to keep all her windows intact. So it was beautiful. It was clean, it was open, it was bright, it was airy, but I know me, I've got way more, I've got a lot more stuff than she had and, and there was no way I could live as minimalist as she did. But for most vans, they are pretty enclosed. You don't have the headroom, so if you're a tall person, that headroom isn't there. I know a lot of people actually come really close to touching the the top of the van, you know, the bees. They're, they're just not a lot of headroom. And to me, that's claustrophobic. And, and that was probably the biggest deal breaker for me. Again, I love the open airiness and all the windows of my class C because I do spend more time inside than I really would like to. And that's a huge bonus for me, not feeling like I'm in a cave and feeling like I have room to move around and Capone and I can move around without running into each other too much. I do step on his paws. I stepped on his little paws yesterday. <laughs> it still happens even in this. Finally, the last con I, in my opinion, of the class B is that there is a, they don't, it doesn't have an oven. And if you like to bake, if you like to cook, if you're like me, you know, pretty much whole foods, I cook everything, I, an oven is going to be important and a class B does not have an oven. Another downside. All right, I think that covers all my pros and cons of class Bs and class B pluses. All right, finally, let's talk vans. Many of you who've been following me for a long time know that I have serious van envy. I want to live in a van so bad. <laughs> but at the very beginning of the video, I talked about having to do soul searching, really sitting down and asking yourself how you want to live out here. What is your level of comfort needs? What do you need to feel comfortable and safe in your home? Because that's what this is. And for me, the bottom line was I would not feel comfortable in a van. But let's talk about vans because so many people love living in vans and there are so many benefits to living in a van. Let's talk about those. Number one, living in a van is the ultimate in minimalism other than living in a car. You it's small, it's compact, it's great on gas, you don't have a lot of stuff because there's not a lot of room. It really is the ultimate in minimalism. You don't have all of the, uh, it's not fully self-contained, so you don't have all of the systems that a Class A, Class C, or a travel trailer, or even a truck camper have. You don't have running water unless you do a build and, and make that yourself, but you're gonna use a lot less water, you're gonna use a lot less energy, you're gonna have a lot less stuff. Living in a van is really the ultimate in minimalism. I mean, if I'm at a, 10 and minimalism now living in a van is a hundred on a scale of one to ten and how minimalist you can be and what your impact on the environment is going to be i have so much respect for people who can live in vans i just i wish i could but i can't i really love my creature comforts the second benefit of living in a van it's it's the ultimate vehicle to live in if you're on a budget the cost to maintain a van is so inexpensive compared to anything else that you could possibly consider living in, partially because you don't have all the systems that you're going to have in a camper. You're not going to have the furnace, you're not going to have the heater, you're not going to have the black tanks and the and the gray tanks and the fresh water and the water pump. You're not going to have all that in a van. You're going to have a very, if anything, you're going to have a very simple build out, very simple, where your systems to run it are going to be a fraction of the systems that it takes to run a camper mobile home. Even if you do rig it so that you've got running water or a toilet or whatever, it's going to be so much simpler and so much less impact than living in a class C or a class A. And for that reason, it's going to be a lot less expensive to maintain the really, and because it's just one whole solid thing, they're a lot more durable. They're going to last a lot longer. You can put insulation in them so that they're going to be better insulated than a traditional passenger van and the only expenses you're going to have are typical vehicle maintenance expenses so i've got house expense house maintenance rv maintenance which is even worse and vehicle maintenance living in a van you're only going to have vehicle maintenance and if you do regular tune-ups regular oil changes and just do your regular maintenance on it your van should last a very long time and it should be really inexpensive maintain and if you're living on a budget the van is really really the best way to go
Another benefit of a van is that it's really easy to drive. You can drive a van anywhere, anywhere. You, there are no limitations to where you can drive a van. Well, off-road, there might be some limitations because you're probably not gonna get a four-wheel drive van. There are some four-wheel drive vans, but there might be a few limitations. You might have some ground clearance limitations, but uh, most of my friends with vans can go places that I can't go in my Class C. So you are going to definitely have more flexibility about where you can go uh, as far as boondocking and dry camping. You can park anywhere when you're in towns. So you can stealth camp a lot easier. The van is going to be the ultimate for stealth camping if you need to stay in cities and towns. And sightseeing, you know, you can zoom around. It's a regular passenger vehicle. You just happen to have your home in the back. So a van is going to be a great option just for flexibility, for cost, for maintenance, for livability, for minimalism. A van is the ultimate. The few drawbacks, in my opinion, of living in a van, number one is the tiny space. Living in that tiny of a space is not for everyone. And especially because a lot of them really do block out the windows and use that space for storage. For me, it feels like living in a dark cave. No matter how much you open the back or the front, it, for me, that just didn't work. And for a lot of people, that won't work. Again, some people find comfort in that. So that could work for you. Or another drawback is a van is not fully self-contained. It doesn't have a toilet. It doesn't have running water. It doesn't have an oven. It doesn't have a refrigerator you're really going to need, uh, unless you buy one converted that has solutions for these things, you're going to have to figure those out for yourself. You can get 12 volt refrigerators, you can get uh, ice chests, you can get a porta potty. You, a lot of people, most people I know who live in vans just live without running water. And, and so in my opinion, living in a van is almost like camping all the time. And that can be a pro or a con, depending on your lifestyle and how you want to live. That was part of the reason I thought I wanted to live in a van. I really wanted, I thought, to feel like I was camping all the time. I was like, well, then, yeah, that sounds like the perfect life. Yeah, but in reality, no. <laughs> That's just, no, again, I like my creature comforts and living like I'm camping all the time, it wasn't uh, realistic for me. I want to be that person, but it's just not realistic for me at this point in my life. So a van is not fully self-contained. The inside can be challenging to move around in, to organize. I think of it like this, at least how I would live in it. And again, everybody who lives in vans does it differently. Some people are very minimalist and have a lot of open airy space and a lot of windows and really live with very little. Some people have found ways to organize all of their stuff and it works for them. But I think the biggest thing that I have seen from everybody who lives in a van is it's kind of like, what are, what's that slider puzzle? right? Um, that's what I think about. It's like, okay, well, I want something here, so I have to move this out of the way and move this down and then move this back to be able to move around. And, and that's a huge drawback to me. That's just a lot of work and just a lot of everything pretty much always has to be in its place or it's a disaster, really, honestly. And I've seen that with people who live in vans. It's like a living puzzle. <laughs> and that's just not for me. It might be for a lot of you and you'd be okay with that. Honestly, I don't have the patience. I think that's what it is. I'm just not patient. I want to be able to open a cupboard and pull something out because if stuff falls and drops and gets cluttered, I lose. I, I don't have the patience. If you have the patience for that, more power to you. I am very jealous, but that's just not me. I think the final drawback or the final con to really consider if you're thinking about living in a regular old passenger van, again, is whether or not you have pets or you're going to have a pet. No matter how well insulated your van is once you do all the insulation and the reflectix and all of that it's going to get 10 15 maybe 20 degrees hotter or colder than an rv is going to get because an rv is made out of fiberglass mostly a van is made out of steel it's gonna get hotter. If you have a pet, you wanna go sightseeing, you wanna go grocery shopping, you wanna go to the movies, you wanna go hiking. You can't leave your pet in a van if it's 85, 90 degrees outside, they will die. If there's a cool breeze and the windows are open, I can do that with Capone. Not to mention I have an air conditioner. So I could always run the generator and leave the air conditioning on, which I did in Florida. I did that video about going down the Blue Springs and I was gone for two or three hours. I was plugged into an RV park actually and I turned the air conditioning on and left Capone inside in the air conditioning. It's another benefit of having a Class A or a Class C or a travel trailer. I have 
air conditioning. And so I can leave Capone inside. If I had to, I could run the generator, leave him inside with the air conditioning. That's not something you really can do in a van. A van is going to get a lot hotter because it's just like a vehicle. L- leaving your pet in a van is really the same thing as leaving your pet unattended on a hot day in a vehicle. Um, in my, I, this is, I've experienced this personally firsthand, leaving your pet in a motor home in a class C, it's going to be 10 or 15 degrees cooler than it's going to be in a van. Huge, huge con of a van in my opinion. Okay. I think that covers everything. I went through all the pros and cons of everything from a class A to a class C, to a fifth wheel, to a travel trailer, to a truck camper, to a van, to a class B, to a class B plus. The only thing I didn't talk about are horse trailers and cargo uh, cargo trailer conversions. And really quickly, I'm going to talk about them because I think, oh, and school buses, all of those are really good solutions, especially if you want to go off road. And if you have the time, the resources, the money to do a conversion on them. What I love about uh, cargo trailers, horse trailers, and I just met someone recently who lives in a horse trailer, and school buses, is that they are built to last. They are probably the most durable things that you can get to live in. They, A cargo trailer is meant to haul cargo. It's meant to haul, haul heavy things like tools and vehicles, and so they're made really well. They're, they're riveted. They're, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Soldered. I mean, they're all kinds of really good stuff in there. (laughs) How's that for really being technical? That's a technical term, but they're put together really well. A horse trailer is the same thing. Think about a horse trailer, okay? It's meant to carry horses, big heavy horses, on country roads, right? Farm roads, country roads, off-road, national forests. So a horse trailer is going to be extremely durable. If you need something durable, you need something that's going to last, a horse trailer would be a really good option, in my opinion. And a cargo trailer, too. They also... Oh, let's talk about trailers for people with mobility issues or handicaps. I think both of those are going to be lowered to the ground, so they're going to be easier to get in and out of. Um, um, a cargo trailer, the, all the ones I've seen are pretty low to the ground. Horse trailers are pretty low to the ground, so that might be an issue. You might have clearance issues on those for traveling off-road. I'm not really sure, but those seem like they might be good options to look into for you. And then a school bus... I heard school buses are meant to have survivors because they're carrying precious cargo, right? They're carrying children. The school buses are built that if they get hit by a train, people will survive. That's pretty durable. So a school bus conversion, and I would love to live in a school bus. And someday, maybe when I have more time, I would love to do a conversion, and maybe someday I will. All right. I've covered everything. I have given you, this video is probably an hour long. I have given you, I think, so much information. I hope you took a lot of notes. I hope it gave you a lot to think about as far as what you want to live in when you get out, head out on your nomadic life. Uh, What do you think? After watching this video, do you have a better idea of what you might want to live in? What you're going to be most comfortable in? What's going to suit your nomad RV living lifestyle better? I'd love to hear from you. What do you think? Did this help clarify for you what you might want to live in? And if so, leave in the comments below what your thoughts are after seeing this video. And if you do live in any of the mobile home, tiny home on wheels that I mentioned above, Leave your comments below. Tell everybody what your experience is, why you chose to live in the vehicle that you're living in. What to you is the benefit, the biggest benefit and the biggest drawback to the vehicle you're living in. Let's help everybody here decide what to live in, whether you're buying your first mobile home to live in or whether you're thinking about changing, down, um, downsizing, upsizing, upgrading, whatever situation you're in. Let's all have a really great conversation below. The experienced people, tell us what, why you love what you're living in and why you don't love, why you might choose something different. And for those of you who are thinking about living this lifestyle, you're you're currently shopping or you're going to be shopping in the future or you're just dreaming about what vehicle you might want to live in, what are your thoughts after listening to this? Did this video reinforce your thoughts about the type of vehicle you want to live in or did it totally change your mind? I'd really like to hear from you. So everybody leave your comments below. Let's have a conversation and help one another out. And I hope you found that helpful. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my life, living on the road, living in an RV, fun, adventure, spirituality, 
philosophical stuff, <laughs> please subscribe below because I have a lot more to come in my adventurous life. Thank you all so much for being with me today. I know that was a lot of information. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you soon. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Mwah.